asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. It's a packed show, so we're going to jump in. Jeremy Corbyn, anti-Semitism, and that mural. The BBC reporting this evening that Corbyn is now seeking an urgent meeting with Jewish leaders to discuss their concerns about the rise of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. Jewish groups, as you heard in the news, have accused him of not doing enough to tackle it. This came in a strongly worded open letter. They said enough is enough. And this afternoon, Jewish groups protested in a demonstration outside Parliament demanding action in the Labour Party. Corbyn repeated his apology to Jewish people in a letter to Jewish leaders ahead of their protest. In it, Corbyn says, and I'm reading from the letter now from Corbyn, I recognise that anti-Semitism has surfaced within the Labour Party and has too often been dismissed as simply a matter of a few bad apples. This has caused pain and hurt to Jewish members of our party and to the wider Jewish community in Britain. I am sincerely sorry for the pain which has been caused and I pledge to redouble my efforts to bring this anxiety to an end. In his most detailed rejection of anti-Jewish prejudice yet, writes the BBC, Corbyn says newer forms of anti-Semitism have been woven into criticism of Israeli governments. Newer forms of anti-Semitism have been woven into criticism of Israeli government, said Jeremy. He went on to say, criticism of Israel, particularly in relation to the continuing dispossession of the Palestinian people, cannot be avoided. Nevertheless, comparing Israel or the actions of Israeli governments to the Nazis, attributing criticisms of Israel to Jewish characteristics or to Jewish people in general, and using abusive phraseology about supporters of Israel, such as Zio, all constitute aspects of contemporary anti-Semitism. So comparing the actions of Israel to the Nazis, Jeremy Corbyn has accepted now that this constitutes anti-Semitism. Oh dear Jeremy, this is muppetry. This is muppetry most foul. Now the Zionist lobby in the UK, which comes in the form of various groups like the Jewish Leadership Council, they were out in force today. Jonathan Goldstein was on BBC Radio 4 Today's programme, or BBC Radio 4's Today programme, I should say. Um, who are these people, by the way? The Jewish Leadership Council, the Jewish, the Labour Friends of Israel and all. Who are these people? Anyway, enough of that, enough of that. Here is Jonathan Goldstein on BBC Radio 4 Today. Again, he heads up the Jewish Leadership Council. The time for words is over, and I think the time for action is now important. The reality is that there are no safe spaces online or in meetings for Jewish people within the Labour Party. Wherever we go, we are told that we act on the instructions of Israel, that Rothschilds run the world, that ISIS is a fake front for Israel, that Zionists are the new Nazis. Hang on a second. Let's go over those again. Rothschilds run the world. ISIS is a fake front for Israel. And... Zionists are the new Nazis. Over to my mate and your mate, Meatloaf. Now don't be sad. Don't be sad. Cause two out of three ain't bad. Two out of three ain't bad. Yeah, you can figure out which two of those three statements are untrue. Zionists. Zionist lobbyists do act on Israeli orders. Zionists who stand over the brutal and degrading treatment and genocide of Palestinians are as bad as the Nazis, because that's what the Nazis did. So if you're doing what the Nazis did, you're as bad as the Nazis. So it can't be anti-Semitism to say that the Zionist behaviour is, is comparable to the behaviour of the Nazis. Now, ISIS is not a front for Israel at all. Although Israel has treated ISIS mercenaries on the battlefield and sent them back 
on their way with a lollipop to behead and torture and maim. ISIS is the creation. It's a joint effort. French, American, UK and Israeli intelligence services gave birth to the Nutter Jihadi beheaders. More from Jonathan Goldstein. The presenter here asks a fairly decent question in amongst this. Jeremy Corbyn is now the figurehead for an anti-Semitic political culture based upon obsessive hatred of Israel, conspiracy theories and fake news. And that is doing great harm, not just to the Labour Party, but to Britain in a wider sense. Finally, can we be clear what you regard as the acceptable way to criticise Israel? Because you know there are many prominent people in all parties, there are many prominent Jews in Britain who want to criticise Israel's actions, Israel's government. They may even have doubts about the creation of the State of Israel. Where is it legitimate Israel to do is, that without being anti-Semitic? Israel is a fully functioning democracy. Go to Israel and you will hear all strands of opinion being expressed daily. And we have no issue with people expressing criticisms of Israel in the manner in which it operates. Oh, you do? But to deny the right of a Jewish state to exist within the Middle East crosses a line into anti-Zionism. Wow. Wonderful. Anti-Zionism. Maybe I'm guilty as charged then of anti-Zionism. Good man, Jonathan. It's not racism. It's not bigotry. It isn't anti-Jewishness. It's opposition to Zionism as an ideology. He got it smack on there, didn't he? Jonathan Goldstein. It's opposition to Zionism as an ideology. Zionists raped, murdered and pillaged an indigenous people, forced them off their land and the ones they couldn't get rid of, they forced them into the biggest open air prison in the world. Not Jonathan Goldstein. He didn't do it. But Zionists did. And it goes on daily. So I'm proud to oppose that. And so are many others. Although we have varying opinions on what should happen in the future, I would be a proponent, as I've said before, of a two-state solution, pre-67 borders, Israel here, Palestine there. That's what I would do. As for Jeremy Corbyn, when he sold out, I'm not going to labour that point, no pun intended. Jeremy Corbyn is a shadow of the backbencher who railed against and screamed against and shouted against and campaigned against the things that he is now running away from. That's a fact. But Jeremy's not the only one to have sold out. Paul Joseph Watson is a very well-known contributor to Infowars.com, Infowars towel boy, Alex's lapdog, whatever you want to call him. Well, he's been tweeting today about how liberals hate Jews and blame Jews for everything. Now, I don't like liberals myself or conservatives or any other identitarian. I like people. People. What a whore Paul, jo Paul Joseph Watson has turned out to be. You might remember this if you're a long-time listener or follower of Infowars. Al-Qaeda, however you want to define that. And uh, because, obviously, Israel, since its formation, has infiltrated and controlled Arab governments and Arab militant groups that they immediately got wind of the plot, went to the CIA and asked them, you know, what are we going to do about this? And basically the, the Zionists and the neocons said, let's use it, which is exactly what they pronounced in their own Project for a New American Century document the year before. They called for a catastrophic and catalyzing event, a new Pearl Harbor, and that's exactly what they got with 9-11. So he points to the fact that there were five dancing Israelis who were originally called Middle Easterners. It later was confirmed by the Jewish newspaper Forward that they were Mossad agents. So, of course, that proves that Israel knew the attack was going to happen. Yeah, well, Israel might have known the attack was going to happen. There's a lot of circumstantial evidence to support that theory. What a change in Paul Watson, who these days writes articles for Infowars decrying those who claim that, it, that Israel, that Zionist Israel, has a hand in some of the things that we've talked about on the programme before. What a change in Paul Watson. I wonder what happened. Fourteen and a half minutes past the hour. This is Monday's programme. This is the Richie Allen Show. More on this with Gilad Atzman in a minute. An extraordinary conversation with Gilad. 
Now, the United States and its European allies are throwing out dozens of Russian diplomats in what has been described as a coordinated response to the poisoning of a former Russian spy in the UK. We don't know that the Russians poisoned anybody. Of course, at this stage, no evidence has been brought forward, but they're kicking out Russians all over the place. God love them. It is said to be the largest collective expulsion of Russian intelligence officers in history. 21 countries have stood shoulder to shoulder with the UK, and it's nearly 100 diplomats that have been told to, well, to feck off. Russia said they would retaliate to this provocative gesture. Presumably that means that Russia will boot out a few diplomats themselves. It continues, Russia continues, I should say, to deny any role in the attack on Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia. They remain in a critical but stable condition in hospital. Also, nobody has a clue, really, because nobody has been given access to the couple. They're not a couple, to the father and daughter. Theresa May has been speaking about this today at Westminster. Here she is. And today, 18 countries have announced their intention to expel more than 100 Russian intelligence officers from their countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. includes 15 EU member states, as well as the United States, Canada and the Ukraine. And this is the largest collective expulsion of Russian intelligence officers in history. I have found great solidarity from our friends and partners in the EU, North America, NATO and beyond over the past three weeks as we have confronted the aftermath of the Salisbury incident. And together we have sent a message that we will not tolerate Russia's continued attempts to flout international law and undermine our values. Undermine our values. Does anybody have any idea what our values are? This shared values, this collection of values that we all apparently have because we reside in Great Britain. Answers on a postcard, please. What are our collective shared values, I wonder? Anyway, May goes on. European nations will also act to strengthen their resilience to chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear-related risks, as well as bolstering their capabilities to deal with hybrid threats. Yeah, because there's an EU army coming, folks. We've talked about this for years and years and years. Problem, reaction, solution. There's an EU army coming. How wonderful. How positively Orwellian. Yeah. We also agreed that we would review progress in June with foreign ministers being tasked to report back ahead of the next council. Mr Speaker, the challenge of Russia is one that will endure for years to come. As That's handy. The challenge of Russia is one that will endure for years to come. How the fuck does she know? How does she know what's coming politically in Russia? Not that I'm saying for a minute now that Vladimir Putin's government represents an external or an existential threat to peace and security. It doesn't at all. I don't believe that, right? But just pretend for a minute that it does, that Putin's government is a big, you know, malevolent entity that's hell-bent on killing everybody. Let's pretend that for a minute. How does she know who's going to be running that country in five or ten years' time? It's convenient. It's like the war on terror. We were told when the war on terror began, weren't we? We were told constantly that it would go on for years. How very positively convenient. Made clear before, we have no disagreement with the Russian people. Ah, piss off. I'm tired of May. There's a few seconds left in that, but I can't be listening to it. This is the same garbage we heard. We have no quarrel with the Iraqi people, just with their leader. We have no quarrel with the Syrians. We have no quarrel with the Libyans. We love the Libyan people as well. We have no quarrel with them. It's not them we don't like. It's their leader. There's a great sign in an old song, you can't keep selling the same old shit to the same old people forever, but they can, and they do, and presumably enough people buy that shit so that when they do eventually ramp up things to the point where missiles are being fired at, Russian planes over Syria, people will go along with it. 